to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Hello, How's it Witters. Going? I'm good. Tell me about this show. How are you feeling being back in your roots in Tacoma? I feel great. It's been a long time since I've been here, and so I've been thinking with this body of work about, um, I know a lot of the influences in my work, and those influences also come from my upbringing. And when I was a young kid, I remember going to the museums and looking at the... I was with you. Yeah, yeah. And we, <laughs> Mom and Dad take us and we'd look at the Native American totem poles. Um, and then I also took a class. This is when I was in Chicago Art Institute and I came back one summer. Um, and I took class and we studied uh, the Native American uh, artifacts, mythology, all that. that stuff. So I, I really, really enjoyed the stories of the Native Americans. Neat. And just kind of analyzing the artwork. So you got to go and work on that now, right? Exactly, yeah. So how does a piece like this have to do with Native American history? Well, these are uh, some of these are titled totems. So I was thinking of a totem pole and almost literally like a stack of animals. One of the kind of signature things in my work uh, having to do with global warming and the waters kind of raising across the world and sort of thinking in maybe the future what things would look like. So that's kind of an added thing that I usually do. In these images, is this a good thing? Are you seeing that animals that were on land are now surviving in water, or are you seeing... It's sort of a bad, it's sort of a, it's a, it's a cautionary tale. Yeah. And it's also an excuse to get, you know, how do you get an octopus with a bear? But this one actually was based on one Native American folk tale. It's common along, among many tribes in the area, and it's called Raven Steals the Light. That's how, uh, that's how humans got light, is Raven disguised himself as like a little child and snuck into sort of a deity's house who had the light in a little box, the, the sun. And the Raven stole the light and actually ingested it um, and then took off, escaped from this little house and, and, and dropped the light on the world. What a great story. Um, so in this one, it's sort of an... Uh, um, kind of the polar, polar opposite. Instead of stealing the light and bringing it to humans, he's taking away sort of the the bad electric uh, electricity that we're dependent on. And we're going to go back to natural light. Exactly. Okay, exactly. I like that. So, yeah. what's your favorite piece in the whole gallery? I actually, I'm I'm fond of this one, um, and I think uh, for me the challenge with these was I, I I experiment a little bit more with color. I feel that my color was a little bit restrained. So, and also my painterly quality. Some of my earlier work was very detailed, not very loose in terms of painting. So with these, I tried to kind of pump up a little bit more of the expressive brushwork, even though to many people they look very tight. Tell me about these hand pieces. Okay, the, the hand here? pieces, I was thinking along the lines of environmental activism, of our reaction, our, our activities during our day, what we shop for, how we use uh, the computer, just day-to-day -day activities between each, each other and the things we buy in that every action we're involved in has some effect, some lasting effect on the world, be they organizations, um, ecosystems, all kinds of different things. So I was thinking, you know, that just being conscious of our action, we can help to preserve the environment. Um, and so this one, I just, I started with my hands and basically took photographs of my your hands. Hand. Yeah. Hold your hand up there. How do you and, know it's um, really your hand? <laughs> we just have to trust And you. just start, and so it's kind of a self-portrait. These pieces are called the Guardian series, and each, each of us is sort of a guardian or a steward of the earth. And so through action, we can, we can basically help to preserve the environment. So, where are we, Josh? <laughs> Some kind of surrealist dream. Um, I feel like I'm like, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. Yeah, the, the initial idea for the show Mist was, I was thinking of, number one, just being missed, the city that I grew up in, I was missing it. And also missed having like a veil like being so far away, something so familiar creates this level of this kind of fog or mist where you can't really see things clearly, so right. it's distorted. And this one actually is a little bit more, I don't know, it's not, it's not like a clear cut idea. It's very similar to the rap piece. It's, a, it's an image I got in my head and I had this idea of this deer and this swarm of butterflies sort of coming down and almost like transforming this deer into something else. So Josh, how many butterflies did you end up using in this installation? There are 516. <laughs> you counted them? Yes. Okay. And how did you think of hanging them? Were you really clear about how you were going to do it? or? No. My paintings are pretty controlled. Yeah? Like it's, it's in my studio. I know what I'm going to do. I work right. it out. So I think just to add a little bit more stress as if I didn't have enough. <laughs> 
It's <laughs> you, well, you seemed very calm when you got here, but were you stressed out? Oh, deep out? inside, yeah. Because you like open a... up this box and you see all these butterflies and you think, how the heck am I going well, to get I, them? Well, I, I had no idea what their ceiling is like. Oh. I had an idea that I wanted it swarming, but I didn't know. I had no I had, In other words, I hadn't put this together in my apartment. It's all just kind of in my brain. Right. Um, so for me, it's kind of a challenge, and it's a real risk because, you know, you set up this show and you have no idea if it's going to work or not. Right. It's, it's always fun, it's always a challenge, and I think it's an added bonus for the folks who come to the shows because they'll see something that they can't see on my, you know, they, they won't be able to experience on my website, and it's, it will also be taken down afterwards, right. too. <laughs> Painting is more traditional and um, accepted. But there's a performer there's, in there's, Josh Keys that there's, wants to get out, that's right? right? There's something else that I think that, um, I don't know, something more immediate in some way. I think painting in some way is very static um, and it's still engaging, but something about this or something like performance or video has this whole other element. And it's just an area I want to explore. And now that I have a little bit more time on my hands, it's something I want to, I want to research a little bit more. Thanks for doing this video with me. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, girl. Thank you. you that was fun.